Sup everybody, this is Carrick from ACG, formerly Angry Centaur Gaming, and today I bring to you the review for Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2 for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Now this is the sequel to the third-person shooter I don't think anybody originally knew they ever wanted in the first place, but actually had turned out pretty okay. So along comes a game with the number two behind it, which either means it's a reflection of its quality or it's a sequel. But really, I think we all know the battle will go on. Listen, these guys are mortal enemies. The Smurfs and Gargamel, old board people, and the Scooby-Doo gang, and of course, Kanye West and Humility. Mortal enemies for the ages, folks. Let's see who sends who to their final buttery and delicious demise. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe or share it. Or don't. Whichever. So here's the review for Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Traffic cone helmets on zombies probably protecting, well, nothing. A zombie version of Master Blaster from the original Mad Max movies. And of course, everyone's favorite buttery artillery. Salted, of course. Graphics are up first. So this is what it's like living inside Orville Redenbacher's wet dreams, as popcorn men shoot melted pats of goodness across levels into the almost creepily happy faces of their plant-like enemies. The characters are the stars of the show here, even if some of them may end up haunting your sleepy moments from here on out. New and old, the characters absolutely hit. And not only is there no actual art overlap, but the assorted classes and tons of characters that make up each of them somehow rarely tread the same ground. Now, let's be honest, you would think you could only draw a zombie in a couple ways, but the first time you see the zombie's new up-close, just-now-dead superhero, you're in for a treat. And the various different versions of that superhero and the bonuses they get aren't simple reskins. Well, yeah, they are in a way, but with an almost fanciful amount of items to customize and grab, including tattoos, hats, weapon skins, and face masks, you really rarely see two characters look somewhat the same. Now, animations for movement are just incredibly slick, with the weight of Colonel Korn's arms bending their stalks perfectly as he runs, or Captain Deadbeard's peg leg walk that's so perfectly done that you can see his icon bob like halfway across the level when zoomed in. Weapon impacts absolutely flood the screen with particle effects and multicolored changing illuminations, which is both awesome to look at because, oh look, it's pretty, but also helps you find where the battle is when the going gets tough and you end up dying and need a respawn. Though one man's Pixar is another man's Hanna-Barbera, the fact remains that these guys have nailed this art style, lending a very lived-in and cohesive connection between characters and locations, where everything just sort of fits without looking odd. From the small neighborhood filled caskets and Halloween leftovers in the zombies area, to the almost 1950s sun-dappled backyards of the neighborhood on the plant side, the world looks gorgeous throughout, and the use of deep color and good sharp shadowing means there's an almost animated pop to the world. Once you jump into the game proper, you realize it's the levels that are the true standouts here. Mixing both complexity shooting gaps and secret high locations you can get to if you tread carefully, each of the levels is an absolute joy to behold. Whether you're traveling through the lava tube confines of a prehistoric map on your search to find the world's biggest dinosaur egg, or waddling through the back lots of an amusement park with a rickety roller coaster threatening to run off the rails behind you, it's all beautifully done and form and function seem to meet seamlessly in the middle. I was really surprised to have the maps play out in so many different ways as well, and this is really a kudo to their level design. We see that promise in many titles, and sure it occurs here and there, but the mix of unique and changeable game types and character types mean I was really always learning something. The first time you end up realizing that choosing a different defensive point in a level can mean waves of enemies crashing on your starchy goodness, or choke points in blind alleys that make defensive gameplay insanely hard... It is really awe-inspiring. Now, another reason I loved having the single player to back me up and be able to train was because of that, because each of the levels handles differently, and there's some actual flexibility within the gameplay itself that I felt that that single player really backed up. It also runs at the same rock-solid frame rate that the original ran at. It seems locked, and I didn't actually notice any drops even when the hot and heavy got going. The only real issue I saw was clipping when four sunflowers decide that they really wanted to plant themselves inside a zombie's obviously fertilized innards. I really hate clipping, but it's sort of expected in titles like this. As a package, I would say the graphics just look really good. Sound, music, and voice. <laughs>
And of course, sound is up first. A game like this needs a couple things. Excellent separation, varied weapon sounds, and a respect for the sound spectrum that passes beyond bass competitions. This has it all. From the freeze ray of the new Citrus Hero to the thrumming sound of a superhero heavy punching you in the face when the going gets short are all done very well with low good in punch on the heavier attacks and the old sci-fi laser gun like sounds and a creep up into dog hearing for the others. Within battles I was able to quickly tell what characters were fighting what and using what simply by the sound of their special weapons and the sound occlusion within this title is actually magnificent. That's a kudo to them. It needs to be mentioned. Sound really is a third eye in this title. Music. Garden Warfare 2 really ramps it up, and it grows on the original with location-specific tracks like the All Hallows' Eve bits within the Zombies main base to the more eclectic tracks like ones that mix in hilariously played organs and oddly charming, more unique instruments with synths blazing whenever two teams slam together. It's odd stuff, though, and fitting for the gameplay, for sure, and saccharine color schemes that we see within this title, but I will not be listening to this outside of the game itself. Now, some tracks are enormously catchy, but for the most part, it's throwaway simply due to the game it's presented within. Voice. <laughs> it's like they recorded me last Saturday night, moans, screams, and the occasional yar from a pirate, but almost nothing anyone can understand. From the zombies gibberish that seems to change moment to moment to the hilarious robot that basically just screams at you in the plain stronghold, the voice is unique, to say the least. Unlike other titles of this kind, I never actually felt like it made much sense or really caught on or was actually even a made-up language. Much of it, in fact, just seemed to be a little bit grating on my ears. Okay, I guess. Fitting for the game world, maybe, but really not for me. Gameplay. While this is still the tried and true multiplayer game that we know at heart, let's get some things out of the way first. Garden Warfare 2 shored up by an absolutely stellar single player experience now, something that really needs to be explained. Pretty much everything that can be done in multiplayer can now be done in single player, allowing for the additional mode to assist some gamers in understanding the basics before going out and ending up on the wrong end of a Sunflower's Love Laser, or if they just want to play on their own, including, of course, normal solo quests that you can take for either side, but also jumping into any type of multiplayer type of match, adjusting the level, unique aspects, like low gravity or unlimited ammo, and then jumping in and experiencing it. The additional option of single player has also meant the removal of some of the instant menu-like feel of the prior title, and instead opening the world around you as a set of bases with somewhat neutral territory between, as well as friendly territory behind. Now this mode is called Background Battle, and I honestly think it's one of the best improvements to this title. Basically, you can explore this little world and find chests to open with stars you get from performing quests and the bulletin board duties that change every day. But if you want, you can go sprinting into the internal battle that's in the center of this little game world. And the more you battle, the more epic it becomes. What starts as low levelers patty caking one another with leafy hands turns into bosses raging across the screen, just sunbeaming your face, as his minions do their best to send you to a secondary death and probably a more permanent one. Now, as always, defenses can be set up using items you get from the card shop that you end up buying with the money that you get from winning different events like defensive turrets and missile bots you would expect from this type of game. There really is a cathartic chaos to playing this particular mode. You just basically spawn, pick a character, and run into the friend mulcher. And for example, while waiting for multiplayer, I ran out and leveled up my character a bit and taught myself the ropes of movement with a couple characters I've never played before. I explored the unique, if a bit empty, back lots and ended up going on a collection quest for a pissed off seagull. Now that means for those of you with a bad connection that want to experience the title, you have more than enough content with battle ops, the single player content, and all those unlocks. Now remember, you do need a connection regardless of the single player content. But of course, most of us want to know how the multiplayer is. It's fantastic, and it returns with new maps and new and old modes. Slick to get into and out of, it was responsive to join requests, and though of course this is prior to launch day, I think launch day will see some delays as we always do, but overall, I really thought it was a robust front end. I just adore these guys' level design as well. Though some can feel cluttered like the Colossus of Candyland with this claustrophobic setup, others have a decidedly expert series of long-range areas hidden crisscrossing with others that are more truncated, which requires the gamer to understand both the short and long game of the character that they have actually chosen. Additionally, as it should be, the modes you choose really do dramatically change the flow and use of these maps themselves, and the interplay of a character's skills can become paramount to success more so than just good aim. 
Now, while some characters have left, maybe to never return, the new additions are really enjoyable with folks like Super Brains bringing a heavy hitting, close range dead superhero into the title with stellar short range gameplay. Old favorites continue to excel with some new abilities and of course variants, which change a great deal about how each one of them plays. That's the thing here. Though you and I may both pick the same character, the variants absolutely change up the gameplay, regardless of the original character class chosen. Now, of course, you do have to unlock those, and that can take a little bit depending on how you go about it. But as a package, they all felt really dialed in and movement was snappy. While this game's version of One-Eyed Willy was a short-range killer with a hidden bit of medium-range accuracy, Cactus required a completely different approach. I could play loose with Captain Deadbeard, reacting a bit more to the battlefield up close, but jumping into Cactus and his far more accurate requirements for enemy hits totally threw me off my game. Exactly as it should be. Otherwise, it'd just be one character on each side and it'd be called Plant vs. Zombie. I also have to say that the level up and progression curve feels really good. Even utilizing bonuses and doing quests to get the multiplayer, this is a game that doles out upgrades in a more sedate manner than some gamers might be accustomed to. But for me, it's perfect. Honestly, this is a title that really is sort of about picking a couple of your favorites and really seeing them expand in their killing repertoire. And that doesn't mean you can't play everyone. I did. It just means you're going to look like frickin' Rimple Stiltskin by the time you get done with everything. Not everything is perfect, though. As I said, man, I wish the overall world was a bit more interesting. It's cool once, but after I went there and looked around, the only reason I would return to that overworld was to collect items, open a chest with the stars I got. And of course, that center part where you do that eternal battle, that was amazing. But the world itself, sort of empty. Also, I have to say the movement continues to feel slow to me, though it's still snappy in its response. The overall speed is slow, and many folks who come from other shooters have said the same about the prior title. It's just much more about placement, teamwork, and good aim. But when you do need to retreat because some jack and ninny is digging under the earth towards your location, it can feel like your character is running in molasses, regardless if you're moving forward or backward. Each to their own, of course. And a couple characters do have some move really quick because holy crap kind of skills that they can employ. You can also import your prior character and get some items for your time spent in the original title. But sadly... Since the progression system itself is different in this game, you start at level zero. Now, before people go and salt the earth at the dev's house, the amount of stuff you get depending on what level you chose to import your character at isn't really that bad. You get a ton of stuff in the form of card packs. So overall, I would say you are in some way reimbursed for what you've done. Fun factor. Listen. This is the way a game should be, with every option leading to some other unique kind of fun. Either solo missions for the screaming robotic man showing me the new levels, or exploring the neighborhoods around the battleground and getting ambushed by what appears to be a Sasquatch Santa Claus. Everything you do in Garden Warfare 2 has a real result, whether teaching you something about a level, the gameplay, the character you're playing, or a boss you've never faced, or just giving you some ducats so you can go and buy something new. It's excellent design from a purely fun standpoint, and the jump in to be doing something really cool time span is astonishingly short. So as always, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. This is actually a buy. Now, though I consistently doubt there's a reason for an internet connection, especially now with the somewhat robust AI and the single player and the building out of those options, and that is a disappointment, the game, for whatever reason you end up getting it, is filled with longevity and never seems to ebb when it comes to enjoyment. It was just always fun, and in a way that's like a fun park now, where even just walking around is really cool, but you know whenever you jump into anything that you can do in the game, you're going to have an even better time. Really, whether you're an old leafy grognard or a newcomer to this title series, I think you're going to really find something to like here. So as always, if you like the video, hit thumbs up. Maybe share it. If you dislike it, hit thumbs down as always. And remember, peace out. And enjoy your upcoming weekend.